Hello everyone, hopefully you are ready to do the analysis and conclusion part of your lab. And this is where you actually start looking at your data to see if your hypothesis was supported or refuted. Uh, and we're going to start with a few definitions. Before all I ever said was we had the variable we change, the variable we measure, and the variables we keep from changing. Well it turns out those have scientific names. The variable that you change is the one you manipulate. Uh, and it's also called the independent variable because it doesn't depend on anything at all. You have total and complete control over what you're going to do to it. So it's an independent variable. It's the one you manipulate. There's only one of those per experiment. Then you have what you measured, what we call the dependent res or responding variable. We call it dependent because it changed it because we changed this one. It depends on that variable. It responds to what we manipulated. So the dependent or responding variable is the one that we measure in an experiment. And then all those ones that we kept the same are called controlled variables. We held them constant. We prevented them from changing. So when we say we're controlling the variable, we don't mean we're manipulating it. We mean we are preventing it from changing. We picked it to be something and we kept it that way. Now, after you do your experiment, you have a data table full of numbers and you're looking for relationships between those numbers. And that's what the analysis is for. You're looking for trends in your data and a good way to do that is with a graph. Now, when you're making a graph, we, we make line graphs because line graphs show us the relationship between two variables, what we changed and what we measured, our independent and dependent. We always put our independent variable on the x or horizontal axis and our dependent variable on the y axis. Now, sometimes you'll actually pull data right off of your, out of your lab equipment and sometimes you're sketching graphs. When you sketch a graph, it's okay to make a, uh, a cartoon of it. You don't have to be super precise, but you should be accurate. Okay? So down here I have my independent variable and I label that. So what I changed in my, in my experiment was mass and I measure that in grams. So I put what I changed and what its unit was. Over here I have what I measured or my responding variable, my dependent variable, and that was time for 10 swings. And I was measuring that in seconds. So I'm going to include that unit, S. But this is not complete. I also need to scale it. Now, this right here is generally zero, zero. So this is zero mass, zero seconds. And I need to get all the way up to whatever my highest mass was. I think I went to 200 grams. So that's 200 grams. And now I can divide this up equally. So right in the middle would be 100. And half of that is 50. And between there and there is 150. And now I think I have all my mass. It's you need to make sure that your graph is equally spaced like this. You can't just randomly change your scale. You should also start at zero and go up. You need to make sure your scales are consistent. Over here I have time for 10 swings. Uh, I didn't actually collect data, but let's say I needed to get all the way up to 20 seconds. Well then I would do the same thing. There's 20. Looks like that could be 10. Maybe this is 15. Maybe this is 5. And then I can plot my data on this graph. So if I took 15 seconds for 50 grams and then 17 seconds for 100 grams and then 16 seconds for 150 or whatever my data shows, I can put those points on my graph. And sometimes we want to connect those dots up just to get a trend and I can see here if that was my trend there wasn't a whole lot going on. But a graph does have labels and units on both sides and you scale your axes. So you start, start at zero and try to use up all of that space. You don't want to cramp everything together. It makes it harder to see patterns. You also have to write a conclusion after you experiment. This is the part where you go back, you look at your hypothesis, you look at your data, you look at your analysis, and you see was your hypothesis supported or rejected. Uh, but we start with a summary. Right? We want a sentence summarizing what you did. So in this lab, we measured how mass affected swing time. In this experiment, I tested how changing the mass of a pendulum affects how long it takes to swing 10 times. That tells me concisely and briefly, this is what I did. Then we have uh, what I found. If I found that adding mass made the swing time go up or go down or stay constant, I would say that. So in this experiment, I tested how changing the mass of the pendulum affects the time it takes to swing 10 times. According to my data, I found that adding mass uh, caused the swing time to increase. And then I want to say, was this correct according to my hypothesis? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go, my hypothesis stated that it would be this way or not. If it supports my hypothesis, I'd say it supports my hypothesis. If it doesn't, then I'm going to say my hypothesis was refuted by this 
And I'm going to, this would be another hypothesis, or I'm going to, I'm going to conjecture another hypothesis that I would test. So if your first hypothesis is rejected, you rewrite a new hypothesis based on the results of your experiment. That's how we gain knowledge in science. If one thing doesn't work, we try another thing. We don't just quit. Now, you're not actually going to have to test that second hypothesis, but you should be able to come up with one. And then finally, um, we're going to write a sentence that gives sources of error in our experiment and you are not allowed to say human error because the only way to eliminate human error from an experiment is to eliminate the human and we always have humans so if you made a mistake measuring or if there were mistakes measuring you identify it and you identify it specifically you don't say we measured poorly you would say we might have made a mistake measuring the length of our pendulum um, or our, we might have incorrectly counted 10 swings or there was a reaction delay in our stopwatch when we were starting and stopping time but you have to precisely and and clearly identify whatever the sources of error in your experiment were human error is not an acceptable thing